All right, Fez, here's the question. True or false, God hates Cleveland. Oh, absolutely. I'm thinking that it's got to be true. The players hate Cleveland. No free agent wants to go there. There's a reason this team is so terrible in football year after year. Now, in basketball, hey, you get LeBron James. That You've changes. been to the flats. You know, the flats aren't bad on a summer night. I don't know about this flats. I did see Springsteen in 1985. And, and I did in go. In Cleveland? Yeah, and I did see the, and, and the Cedar Point roller coasters are great. Pregame.tv. Are we buying or selling the Cavs now that Kevin Love is hurt? And I'm going to start here and say the Cleveland trade for Kevin Love is going to go down as one of the worst trades in NBA history. Not only did they give up a better player than Love and Andrew Wiggins. I mean, Wiggins was phenomenal this year in Minnesota and has unlimited upside. But there are future number ones that aren't going to be there. LeBron supporting cast just like it was in Miami, is somewhat limited. Didn't they, like, go to the NBA championship three years with that with them, though? I mean, see, I would say the Miami experiment was a, certainly a success, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But we're talking about, right now we're talking about, are we buying or selling the Cavs? I'm post-Kevin Love, because Love now is out for the postseason. Of course, J.R. Smith going to miss the first two games uh, of the Eastern Conference semifinal. Yeah, I'm... Um I think the air supply song, I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without him. But I actually think they are going to be a little bit lost, and here's why. Who's better? Nazgov, who I always think is like a Nazgul from The Lord of the Rings. That'd be a good name for him. Or Kevin Love. Who's better? I don't even know who you're talking about. The center for the, that they picked Oh, Mozgov? Yeah, Mozgov. Uh, they have different roles. Mozgov's probably a better defender. Love's a better three-point shooter. Comparable. Um, the Cavs stunk before they got him. So my take is easy. I'm like, if those two players are about equal, if Love's out for the playoffs, I think they're in a world of hurt. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, Fez, you ignorant slut. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Okay, you're saying that because Cleveland, with a whole new roster and a brand new head coach, had some early season growing pains before they picked up a seven foot low post defensive stud as their anchor, that therefore then Kevin Love goes out now and therefore Cleveland's good or bad or I'm, what are you telling me? Here? Let me simplify it for you. Yeah, when make, it, make it simple. When Cleveland has four good players uh -huh. and they all get to know each other, they're good. Now they have three good players, and it's going to be too much to overcome the fact that they don't have, and he's such a great role. He cleans out the paint. You just stick Kevin Love at, out on the perimeter. You have him bombing threes, and now King can drive, and he takes guys like Yannick Noah. Oh, Yannick Noah? Jakeem Noah. <laughs> with his tennis racket, swatting all those balls because he can just park in the paint now. Mm -hmm. Going to be a big problem. Well, let's start with his replacement, all right? Kevin Love has a replacement on the roster who's probably every bit as good as he is in Tristan Thompson. Thompson, he's not a household name. Can't shoot. He's not a perimeter shooter. He's a low post stud. He rebounds really well. He defends. Tristan Thompson, remember, number four overall pick. This is not a, a, a low-tier talent. Tristan Thompson has enormous upside. And now, again, he's we're the talking guy about defense. foul on purpose, right? Because he can't even make free. Well, that'd be Kendrick Perkins. Yeah. <laughs> Kendrick worse. Perkins is likely to see. But again, you're talking about Mozgov and Perkins and and um, and Thompson. How do you drive the paint against this team? Everything coming against Cleveland in round number two is going to be from the perimeter. There's going to be no low post scoring. Yeah, when you're on offense, how are you going to drive into the paint when you've got these big stiffs? Perkins and Thompson, are your kidding, just cluttering things up. It's going to kill James's game. I tell you, I know you got the king, but it's going to be like the movie Kingpin. You're going to get Munsoned if you bet on this team. <laughs> you will get Munsoned. Well, let's talk about this. The king. All right. Number one, now David Blatt's got a whole bunch of different options, all right? He can start James Jones and move LeBron to the four. He can start Tristan Thompson and move LeBron to the three. There's roster flexibility that wasn't there necessarily when Love had to play the four. So Blatt's got options, and he's got options that he doesn't necessarily need to tell people what he's going to do. He can adjust and make adjustments in-game. Number two, we saw in Miami last year that Heat team stunk, all right? It was no better than this year's Heat team 
but LeBron was worth 25 wins, and he was worth, you know, five or ten wins in the postseason by himself. LeBron is that good. LeBron is that upper echelon guy who can carry a team even after losing a quote-unquote key piece like LeBron. And you're counting on David Blatt mm -hmm. to push the right buttons to get us to the promised land despite losing him. Let me um, use an example that sums it all up as far as why Cleveland is completely um, a sell. Uh, on the radio, Andy Esco and I were talking about it. What What's the series price, I asked him. Is it going to be on Cleveland and it's going to be when they uh, face Chicago? And he says, oh, I think Chicago plus $1.20 has good value. Plus $1.20. Now, he had two seconds to prepare the bottom lines. They're not going to be plus $1.20. They're going to be plus two thirty. dollars Ridiculous. Uh, Cleveland is sell, sell, sell. Cleveland is buy, buy, buy. And that's a difference of a great. Bye, bye, all right. They'll be bye, bye. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Teddy and Fezzik disagreeing on the Cavaliers right here on pregame.tv. Don't get Munson, baby. Don't drink the Kool-Aid.